Hello, time travelers. I thought I was gonna make a video about how much I hate the snow, but then I remembered I already made that video last year. But instead, I'm gonna talk to you about how this diet I'm on with eating only chicken and broccoli is exhausting. And it's cutting into my schedule. This is my look of disapproval. This is my look of exhausted. Hey, you wanna see a life hack? You get the, uh, the masks that go around the back of your neck instead of around your ears, and then you can use them while you shovel snow or you walk outside and commute by walking in the bus because you're a person with a broke down car like me. Hacks. Really useful way to use your human malware mask. So I recently did 30 days, no sugar. Got all the filming done on that and only a little bit of editing done because I immediately wanted to go straight into chicken and no broccoli because it's easy to go from doing one thing into the next thing because otherwise you go back to your normal eating habits, which for me is keto. I just wanted to go straight into the next thing so I'd get it done to see how that worked for me. So what that did was make it so that I couldn't have time to edit the 30 days no sugar because the chicken and broccoli diet is one of those extreme diets you don't want to do for a long time because it doesn't give you any fat at all just protein and fiber. Get off my license plate, Snow. You're not in this scene ever. Get out of my life. Some of you may be watching and have a clever question, which is, why your car all up in the snow? Thought you had a Nova. Don't you put that in your gay garage? I mean, garage? Sometimes I say gay garage. I know that's how the British pronounce it. Well, I could explain the, the whole thing in sequential logical order, or I could say it out of order, which is more interesting. And we're all time travelers here, so out of order will be more fun anyway. Stupid snow getting on my jacked up hood that's all jacked up. So to explain why my car is sitting in the driveway and it's not back there in the garage, we start the story in the middle. My mechanic says we fixed the upper control arm and some other thing, can't remember right now. You always click on this card so you can see the previous video where I actually went over the, the repairs that had been done. If you want to see that after this video. I had already been calling around. It took me forever to find a body shop that'll tell me what I need. And what I need is not to get it restored, but to get to somewhere called a frame shop. So I got a good frame shop that said they were willing to look at it, even though they were booked up for a couple months. And they wouldn't be able to work on it right now. I'm like, that's cool. I don't care if I have to tow it there and then tow it back home. I'll do that. So he looks at it. He says, you need a subframe. I'm like, thanks for the info. I'll send a tow truck, bring it back home. Tow truck comes back home and tow truck guy says, I couldn't start your car. I'm like, what? And he says, I started it the first time because I was the same guy that towed it to the frame shop. I'm like, okay, but you couldn't start it this time. Then I'm thinking about how Sometimes I'm the only person that knows how to start the car or turn it off. It happens all the time. Like even one time when I got the wheel fixed and the guy didn't know how to start it. The shift plate is a metal bar on the bottom of your transmission that actually moves to shift the transmission. And mine sits funny sometimes. So you have to reach through the steering wheel and hold it up. And then you can do the thing with the key. The only thing that bothers me is I get a mechanic that says they know how to work on old cars and then they can't figure that out. But there was no freaking snow any freaking where when the car got dropped here and it's been like a week and a half and i haven't been able to move it in the garage i hate snow i vote we get rid of snow forever never have any more again so i get in the car after the tow truck guy leaves and i try to start it and there's no power it's like click click you know there's no power at all easy right battery's dead so i'm like no big deal i'll charge the battery came out in the freezing cold Run two extension cords over here, get the thingy what's it that charges the battery overnight. Two days later, still not charged, still blinking light saying it's charging. And then I remembered, I remembered my ignition cylinder is jacked up. It's a thing that you put the key into and you turn it and then it pushes the rod, which pushes the actual ignition switch at the bottom of the steering column. I always thought it saw as a kind of a convenience because the way it was screwed up, it would let me take the key out after I started it, put the key in my pocket. And then you turn it off when you get home. If you forget to turn it off when you get home, it drains the battery. But I started to think over the years, I had to change the battery like a dozen times. So I've owned this car like 10 years. I've had to change the starter twice. I've had to change 
No, the starter twice and it was the alternator twice. And I've changed other electrical stuff I'm not gonna get into. I sort of think maybe the ignition cylinder's jacked up and that's why it keeps killing my electrical stuff. Even though it's, there's no wires going to the ignition cylinder, it's just a freaking thing. You turn the key and it pushes a rod into a thing to start the car. I don't get it. But since I was charging it for two days and it didn't charge, I knew something was jacked up. So I unplugged the battery and I checked on it the next day and it was charged. So then I tried to start it again. Well, plug battery back in and try to start it again. And it wouldn't start, but this time it's going ngung 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 ngung. I tried pushing the gas and it's like ngung 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 ngung. So I have my YouTube light out here in my Viltrox. I laid on the ground, still no snow. At least it was that, still freezing cold. Tapped the gas tank and it was like sound. Empty! Sigh. Toss. So I thought about it like, oh my gosh, I've only got a two gallon and a one gallon gas can. Probably have to walk back and forth a dozen times to the gas station to fill up the tank. So the next time I take it to a mechanic, they have enough to run it on. But I also realized the mechanic probably left it running because they couldn't figure out how to get it to turn off because they didn't reach and pull the shift lever. So then the next day was a Sunday and I was trying out a new church, which meant I had to walk kind of far to a bus stop to realize I was late because apparently I walk slow when it's brrrr outside. So then I walked a couple miles to a different bus stop so I could take that bus. I was to church late. But somebody at the church was willing to give me a ride home. That's sweet. And he said he had a five gallon gas can. So he drove all the way back home to the forever far away from me neighborhood he lives in nearby the church, gets it, comes back and it's full, right? Super nice of him. And he gave me a trip to the gas station. We filled it up again and my one gallon and my two gallons. So now I got like 12 or 13 gallons in there. So we'll find out in a minute or an hour or however long it takes me to shovel all of this if I could start it. So then my mic stopped working for some reason. So hey, it's future slash editing me. I reconnected the battery, but when I tried to start the car, it still wouldn't work. Failure. Then I remembered about the electric choke. That is why you fail. Modern cars automatically adjust the fuel air mixture when it's cold out. On old cars, it's different depending on what kind of choke is on the carburetor. So I had to adjust it to make the mixture a little more fuel rich. But even then, with this type of engine, you have to start it and let it die a couple of times when it's that freaking cold outside. Then on the third time, hold the gas down for a while and wait for the engine to warm up. Then I was finally able to dematerialize and engage the time circuits to move the Nova a few seconds into the future. into the garage. And for some reason, my mic started working again. And we're here. I moved the shifter. All right. You may ask, hey Rob, where did the rest of the snow go from the Nova? Well, maybe you don't fully understand the mechanics of time travel. So hold on, we'll explain it a tiny little bit. It maybe looked like only a second or so for the Nova to be gone, but I was in the time vortex, like, I don't know, somewhere between five and six seconds, which is enough time for the radiation in the time vortex to melt off all the snow. So now you might be asking, Hey Rob, then why did you waste all that time cleaning off your car? It's a time vortex thingy, what's it? It's just gonna melt all the snow off. Well, I'll tell you, I didn't want a giant bubble of water that's still on my car to materialize in my garage and go splash everywhere, okay? Jeez. And for some reason, my mic started working again, so... Back to past time travel face me. Now I have to freaking shuttle the rest of the driveway where it's really important to me actually right now because that's where my Amazon grocery deliveries pull up. Need that to be safe. 
Ah, take this mask down for a minute. Why don't we finish up the video? Starting with this week's tech thing. This week's tech thing is the Sunsony pink and white mechanical keyboard with brown switches. If you don't know what brown switches are, there's this company in Germany called Cherry and they make the best keyboard switches ever and they color code their switches by type. We're not getting into that. My favorite's brown though. And these are not Cherry switches, they're knockoff ones. This is a really cheap keyboard. You should be able to get it stupid cheap like the price of a regular stupid keyboard but it's a lot easier to type on and a lot less finger strain if you have mechanical switches and I like it for a bunch of reasons it's got the backlighting and it also has Cherry MX compatible stems so you can buy all kinds of gimmicky keycaps all over the internet if you want and it's got very, very little flex so that means it's got a solid aluminum frame inside well that's all I needed in a keyboard and I grabbed it for myself for, for my birthday in December's and freaking Rainbow Princess stole it, but yeah, uh, I, I still love it. And now, enjoy this random thing. This random thing actually comes from my hashtag enjoy this random thing on my Discord. And I'll give you an invite below if you want to go there. And people put random things there sometimes. And Luwade puts this picture of a guy in a business suit standing on a chair. And Elemental Place, which is my son, says, not safe for work. And now, dad joke time. And this dad joke is one that my dad sent me on a page called Casual Christian Comedy 2. I guess it's the second one. Anyways, the waitress asked the man who's sitting with his daughter, how did you find the steak, sir? And he says, I just looked next to the potatoes and there it was. And now awkward end screen. Cause I don't feel like getting out of this car yet. Cause when I do, I know I have to unplug the battery so it doesn't kill the freaking battery. So I'm just gonna point at things by doing this. Why don't you go over here and see how much I hate snow and why I call it sky poop. Yep, that's, that's right, sky poop over there. And then the video down here is whatever YouTube thinks is best. And you can subscribe to my channel by, by clicking that thingy, what's it? And you can check out my music where I put my music soundtracks and other music I make over there. All right, thanks, bye.